Welcome back, everybody. This is the Predictive Playbook powered by Wager Talk and SportsMemo.com. I have a, a NHL expert in the house today and a PGA expert, and he's really good at just about everything he touches with pro- professional sports better, Don Buster. And you never call him Don, just like you would never call me Johnny. You can call him Buster, and that's a cool name because of, you know, look at him. He's Buster, man. He's cool, cool guy. So, Buster, welcome to the show. And, uh, you know, I can't get into the NHL just yet. Um, um, you know, I've called six therapists this morning. Uh, they won't take me. Uh, and my connection with Tony Finn is really hurting me. Uh, even Tony Finn's therapist said, no, I'm, I'm filled. But, uh, you know, that... Uh, that game last night with the Sixers, I actually was spared the fourth quarter because I dozed off. Uh, oh, but, really? Yeah, I did. Um, but you, you know, I dig around I with the lucky, database lucky a little you, bit. I guess. What's that? I said, lucky for you, just being a Philadelphia fan. Lucky for you. you oh man, I you know. You didn't want listen to this. Um, that. <laughs> it's the third largest uh, come from behind victory in NBA playoff history. And with eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Sixers were up 25. Mm -hmm. In the Super Bowl with New England and Atlanta, Atlanta was up 25 with eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Now, is that that just coincidence or, you know, is uh, like the universe trying to tell us something? Well... We, we could have a whole conversation about uh, what you believe in or not, and if there's a, a simulation running this whole thing or whatever you want. That's a that's a whole different thing you don't really want to get into here. We want to talk about sports. But when you see stuff like that, it kind of makes you makes you think a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, so I, I could even tell you, this has nothing to do with sports. I could tell you a quick story. My wife's, uh, well, mother-in-law uh, passed away two weeks ago. And, oh, and, and it's, uh, I'm not saying that because of that, I just, but as far as coincidences or you, you wonder sometimes, and uh, she was big with hummingbirds. Well, we're here in Mexico. We hadn't seen any hummingbirds this year, right? Uh, my, my wife now, like she goes to uh, Zumba or whatever, a couple times a week, you know, and she was walking back on the beach yesterday, saw a hummingbird. We watched this news thing all the time from Canada because we're Canadian because we're trying to get back and we want to make sure to see what's going to happen with the uh, quarantine and all that stuff uh, and uh, on last night at the end of the news they had a beautiful picture of a hummingbird flying into there my wife just looks wow. at me like, and I always joke with her saying hey, wow you know what don't get too don't get all caught up in life enjoy this life we have a life enjoy it don't get all down don't get I always say and I've said it here you know, even with win- winners and losers, you, you know, don't take the wins so great and don't take the losses so bad because that's 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 part of gambling and just like in life, right? So, you know, I, I always joke with her, hey, we're just in a, I joke, we're just in a simulation, anyways, baby. So don't worry about it. And when she saw this hummingbird stuff, which we haven't seen down here all year, she's like, you know what? Maybe you're white right, because her mother was all into hummingbirds, eh? So kind of kind of funny. That's a beautiful story, it really <laughs> is. That's that's a that's a cool story, but. Anyways, as far as that, when you bring up that Atlanta New England Super Bowl, I tell you, I had Atlanta and I had them large. And I know as professional gamblers, you're supposed to, you know, we have a very, very strong, strong backs, you know, like you're supposed to wipe everything right off and just move on to the next day. That that beat took me took me three or four days. I tell you, I, I couldn't get over that. That was a that was a tough. tough yeah, that, uh, for whatever that, reason, Buster. Uh... I was on the other side of that Super Bowl. I'm actually uh, 18 and five in Super Bowls. I just have a, a magic oh, wand. Really? And granted, there's been lucky wins. Uh, twice yeah. there's been lucky wins uh, involving the Patriots. Uh, we had that win, you know, the interception in the end zone against, uh, against Seattle. Seattle. And uh, even uh, you know, being down 28 to three, I, I must have said five or six times, "Well, it's just not our year." During the game. And then when you, you could see the comeback coming. You could feel But then it. when Julio Jones caught that ball on the sideline, I then again said, well, the game's over. And then inexplicably, been. Quinn runs been. those plays. You have the best field goal kicker in the world. 
uh, and just yeah. again, it was like something. Did I just see that? I mean, did this really happen, or am I like just imagining it? I, I'm and I kind of had to. Sorry. No, it's all right. I had the same feeling, uh, you know, today now. You know, like did twenty five point lead, you know, and then the coincidence that the lead was the same in the exact same time of the third quarter in a football game and a basketball game playoff situation, and Atlanta's in both of them. You know, that's that's the other thing that's so weird. So is is that the universe giving the city of Atlanta uh, their due because of what happened all those years ago, and now that reverses around, and Atlanta's on the right side of this thing? Well, I guess, I guess it should have been the no. Celtics then because, you know, New England. Is, but no, maybe well, Philly's just destined yeah, to uh, – not having yeah, any that, happiness here for a true, while. Guess, but I'm just saying it has to do with Atlanta, right? So Atlanta right, yep. got beat that time, and then now this way. Yeah, I, I guess obviously yep. it's not the same thing. So I guess it would have made more sense with the Celtics, but, you know, Celtics didn't get there. Yeah. And um, for me, though, John, I, I know everybody, like you're just hearing, and, and I've seen that mean what you talked about, showing that Atlanta and showing the, the Atlanta football, the, the, the game too, the Falcon game. But uh, to me, you watch enough NBA, and you to me, you seem to see this a lot. Teams coming back from third 20 points. I, I know there's it probably hasn't been that much in the playoffs, but you, send, you tend to see it a lot more in the NBA. I, if you had to ask me what was more shocking of the two, no doubt in my mind, the, the, the Super Bowl game was way more shocking than this. I agree. One. I agree. Yeah, because you don't have that many points scored. Uh, no. You, know, you, you don't, don't have, have 100 points scored, no. right? Yeah, and you have a team that can actually, yep. which we're supposed to, run the ball. Very easy. Run the ball, run the clock out, don't give Brady that many chances. But anyways, we're just we're just uh, opening up bad wounds here for me. So uh, <laughs> we, we can move on, John, anytime you, you feel. <laughs> yeah, and I was just trying to – I just was saying how lucky I've been with that particular game, you know, it, well, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely uh, I'll be asking you for your Super Bowl pick uh, right, really early, uh, come like mid-January before the game in February. So I'll, so I'll make sure I get on the right yeah. side of that. Be happy to give it to you, you know, and just uh, you know keep my fingers crossed and hope it wins. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, the NHL playoffs are are equally as exciting as maybe not quite as dramatic as what we saw last night, but we did have a big upset. With the uh, Montreal Canadiens uh, beating uh, the Las Vegas Golden Knights three to two, mm-hmm. and they were plus two hundred underdogs, and really came out of the gate fired up. It was two nothing at the end of the one, and then uh, Vegas mounted a comeback, and then it just wasn't enough time for them to be able to tie it, tie it up, uh, so to speak. But it, that was a pretty exciting game to say the least. And we have another one tonight. Both series are tied one one. And uh, the Lightning here on the road at the Islanders at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, which we all know, and you uh, specifically know, it. that place is going to be rocking uh, tonight for sure. So uh, I can't imagine being, uh, you know, even a professional athlete on that Lightning team and having to face that crowd. But they're going to do it, and maybe somehow it motivates them. But right now... Uh, Tampa Bay is a minus 140 favorite on the road despite all that, and the total is five. So how do you see this game unfolding, and who's going to take control of the series, Buster? Well, John, I, I'm first going to speak about my Montreal Canadiens. This, I'm actually donning the shirt from the last time they won the I Stanley Cup, it. 1993. And this year for Montreal has a very similar uh, feeling to it. So... I'm very happy the way they played. They, they, they have to play that way to beat Vegas. That's the only way they have to keep out of the penalty box. Carey Price has to be even better than he was and has been. He has to be better, and Montreal can win this series. And I'm 
uh, like me and the rest of the Montreal Canadian fans, we were kind of sick of hearing sweep, sweep, sweep. We've heard it all. Toronto to win in five, no problem. Montreal stinks. Oh, yeah, they lose. Oh, Winnipeg's going to uh, – a, a friend of mine joked about uh, – the one of the Wager Talk boys was joking that Winnipeg would even win in three games. They wouldn't even play the fourth. You know, so it's just all joking. But Montreal wins in four straight, and they're here to stay. They're, they, 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 they may lose. There's, of course, there's still a big underdog, but they're going to give the, this is going to be a series. It's not going to be Vegas and five. It's going to be a series. So, anyways, John, I had to get that in there. With yeah, it's fine. With, with a big win last night, but uh, yeah, it's uh, all good. So now, now let's talk about the uh, Islanders and uh, Tampa Bay, another team really that didn't give got much respect at all to start the series. They were getting plus two twenty for the series the Islanders were and anybody that knows hockey and has watched these last two games knows that yeah this is going to be a series Tampa Bay is the former Stanley Cup champions and they they are very very good their power play is unbelievable and it's going to be very important for the Islanders to just stay out of the penalty box if they can do that they've been playing with them five on five so, but that power play is deadly. Right now, they, they've uh, they're two and seven. They've had two goals out of seven att- attempts in the first two games. But uh, in tonight's game, I actually gave out to my clients the Islanders plus that two twenty for the series. I thought there'd be. I, I actually really like the Islanders here. I love Barry Trotz. These two teams. Uh, for people that don't know that are not NHL fans, they both they played in last year's semifinal, and Tampa Bay won four games to two. But they were all close games, and actually two of the games went to overtime. The team mm. split split them. One game went to double overtime. The other game went to overtime. So this was never going to be an easy series for Tampa Bay. Does Tampa Bay have the better talent? Of course they do. They have some. They have two or three guys that are fantastic. But just like Montreal, this is when you get into playoff hockey, it's a team game and it's goaltending. And the Islanders have, and, and they they have who I think is probably the best coach in the NHL, which is Barry Trotz. He took Washington to a Stanley Cup. And I think he's going to be the difference here. This series will probably, I, I said right from the get go, I when I did my write up telling, you know, and I'm sure a bunch of my clients, you know, Buster, what do you what do you mean the Islanders are you're taking the Islanders? And I gave him a nice write-up telling them why. And so far it's it's turning out how I thought. I I, I gave out Tampa Bay yes in game two. I I firmly believe the Islanders will win one of these two games. And it would not shock me if they won both. But I really believe they're they're gonna win both one of these two games. So you're getting plus one twenty with the Islanders here tonight. You're gonna get Islanders uh, again in game four plus money. I'm taking them both games. I've already gave out the Islanders plus 120 in this game. And a couple of things, John, you mentioned it. Nassau Coliseum, 14,500 capacity. I've been there back in a long time ago. And actually, Wayne Gretzky was playing for the LA Kings. That's when I was in Nassau Coliseum watching, awesome. them, watching the Kings play the Islanders. And that place will be crazy tonight. I actually even read something somewhere where there's season, it's just season ticket holders that got those tickets. And there was a, once like their sites crashed and everything. So there's not going to be, it's not like other places where you're going to see the the visiting team's fans there. It's, it's going to be very minimal of the visiting teams of Tampa Bay's fans there. And a couple other points here. Islander, what for the Islanders to win? A, I already mentioned it. Do not take penalties. B, what they have done in Tampa, they, they've they been winning the face-off battle in Tampa. Now they get to go back home where they get the last change. They In game one, they won the face-off battle 60%. That's huge. Last game, I think it was 53 54%. As far as hitting, the hitting has been similar. You know, they, they both have been, I think they tied in, in hits given uh, the one game and uh, maybe Tampa was up by one or two. That's that's key. There's a lot of these keys that uh, that favor the Islanders and they're an underdog at home in front of, in the energy from there. And two teams have already felt that. 
Boston was a big favorite and, and they played them. So me being a longtime hockey fan, I, when I saw 220, the value is just to me. I know it's Tampa Bay Stanley Cup champions. They can't lose, just like Vegas can't lose. But I've been doing this a long time, John. These are two <laughs> good. These are two good series. I told my clients from the bat. I told everybody on puck time from the off the bat that they're going to be good series. Will it be Tampa Bay and Vegas at the end? Very well could be, but it wouldn't shock this guy if one of those other two teams were in the finals. Yeah, it wouldn't be either. Um... I did a little study on the on the goaltending, and obviously the Lightning have you know an incredible goaltender. But you know the Islanders is uh, a veteran. They're both Russians, by the way. That's a, yes. an interesting matchup right there. Uh, but the Islanders uh, goaltender is coming off career best in goal goals against average, save percentage, and shutouts this season, and he is a veteran. So do do you see like I think that's an advantage, but you would know better than me. So is that an advantage for him being a veteran and, and being in that rock and roll stadium tonight and yeah, well, for, pitching a well, shutout? Yeah. Well, for me, it, well, it'd be very tough for, for him to pitch a shutout. Vasilevsky's very, very good as well. They're both good cold tenders. But to me, uh, truthfully, if, if I had, if somebody said to me, okay, Buster, you got one game you need to pick one of these guys, I'm taking Vasilevsky. Not not save that Valarmov yeah. isn't he's very I mean he's been playing fantastic as well. So to me the goaltending is a wash. To me, this game is like I say, I understand out of the penalty box. I think the Islanders will just come out flying. If they can get it up, just like Montreal. If you these teams like the Islanders of Montreal, they play great with a lead. Not so much when they fall behind. And you saw that in game two as Tampa Bay jumped on them and you know, so but being at home, they could get behind and still come right. back. But when you're on the road, it's very it's it's very tough for a team like the Islanders who play that defensive checking style. But but the difference this year, they lost in six last year, John, to Tampa Bay. The difference this year is they seem to have a little bit more a team. Trotz has had one more year with this team, so their special teams are a little bit better as well. So all that little extra time in another year, to me, gives the Islanders that that much of a, a, a better chance to win this year instead of losing in six. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. And unlike, unlike the NBA, which has all these injuries occurring now, oh, it looks like both these teams are uh, pretty, you know, full strength. Yeah. Uh, so there's nothing to really worry about there uh, come game time. You know, I'm seeing really nothing – of the kind as compared to the NBA, which is uh, you know, more like reading a mass unit uh, report than an injury report these days. Yeah, but this exactly. is going to be an exciting game, no no doubt. And uh, you know, for anybody who's watching the game, it'll be televised on USA Network. And you'll hear and feel that fan enthusiasm that that fan base has for their Islanders. And it, it's I don't know if it's matched anywhere else, Buster. Yeah, well, Vegas, you get uh, right. I'll tell you right now, Vegas is is a place that matches it for sure. It's uh, Vegas is is crazy. I think I talked about this on a show earlier about how uh, the Vegas fans. But yeah, when you have again, it's Nassau Coliseum. It seems like you, the fans are on top of you. They, uh, it seems like they're yeah. a lot closer, and they very well. I don't know. I'm not a architect or anything, but uh, it just seems like just from being in both buildings. It seems like it's a lot closer on top of uh, on top of the yep. uh, ice, right? So, uh, anyways, yeah, it's 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 going to be great. The NHL again, and I I said this on this show. Maybe I've been on a bunch of times, and I'm a big hockey fan, as you know. And I'm 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 thrilled the way hockey has really hit the United States now. They did so much to try to get the you know the people in the US to 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 enjoy hockey to grab onto it and you know from like we talked from glowing pucks because people would say oh, it's too hard to follow the puck and stuff like that and uh, I'm but what what did it gambling in every state so there is all these guys that were really you know like it doesn't they don't hit the Nielsen ratings but there's a ton of NHL fans in the US and now they're strongly coming out with because of the gambling with, uh, you know, AC, like New Jersey opened up, New York State, all the states uh, legalizing gambling. And plus, like I say, there's a lot of fans, and I, I don't think hockey got the 
got their just, they were always, you know, number four. They'd be joking that it's even the fifth sport. Well, it's getting more and more popular. And the more and more people go to a live hockey game, they'll fall in love. It's, it's, a, it's a great sport. And I'm a little prejudiced being Canadian, but, you know. Uh, it's, it's probably okay. I mean, it's, it's a tremendous uh, statement you just made and so very true. You know, uh, but before I forget, and I can't even believe I would forget this, I know I love it when you put out those 5% plays uh, because they have done extraordinarily well. And I hear rumor you might have one tonight. You want to tell us what you have and how people can get it? Uh, yeah, John, I have a uh, 5% in, in the NBA uh, game tonight. It's, a, it's, on, it's on the total and uh, either first half or full game. Uh, just throw that out there so you know you have options um i'm hitting 92 percent in uh, the, my last 12 nba total releases so i really like this one i have a good analysis in there and uh ho- hopefully it will go our way you know like again anytime you're putting these plays out like this you know that uh, it's yeah. just like it's just like a lot of the other plays. I have been very successful. I have a I have a format where you know, and I don't put out a ton of these five percent plays. So I have a format. I think uh, over the last three years, I don't think I know over the last three years since about August two thousand eighteen, uh, even my time back on Wager Talk, I'm hitting fifty eight percent with my five percent releases. So it's not when we when we unload on one of these things we're uh we're pretty confident but as you know in this game being confident is about 55 percent of the time so uh you know it's uh i'm i'm looking forward to tonight's game i'm looking forward to the hockey so it, it should be good and you can go over to sports memo i've actually got it on sale you can get it for only 19 dollars. that's awesome and that's a great deal folks i mean like 19 bucks for uh, the normal price is thirty nine dollars, so that that's a great deal, and it gives you a a, a real good look at the, how good this guy really is. And you know, like he's saying, you know, if this play loses tonight, don't don't judge his experience and his expertise on just one play because that's that's kind of uh, it's definitely missing the point. You know, the, the best thing to do is get the long term subscriptions, make that your test drive, and. Anybody at sportsmemo.com, when you do that, you'll, you'll be a satisfied customer. You know, we can't promise you're going to make a lot of money. We can't promise that you're going to lose a lot of money. But we can promise you you're going to have a good experience and you're going to learn just an absolute mountain of information and wisdom about, about professional sports betting. And that can help you immensely. Yeah, so sure. uh, any, any last thoughts uh, before I let you go, Buster? Uh, no, just... Uh... Looking forward to the U.S. Open. It just I see it was suspended early, so uh, looking forward to that. I like when it's out on the West Coast because then uh, you can, you kind of get to watch you know all day. Uh, Mrs. Buster, she not so much like it when it's on the West Coast like that. But uh, then again, she's used to be watching sports for about twelve hours a day, so it's no big deal. It's just a different sport. She she, she loves hockey, so we, we always watch all the especially come playoff time. So it's a, always watch the hockey, but it's always and that's important too. And for for guys. The, maybe I'll just throw this out as my last little thing for guys just starting out. There's a lot of young guys, a lot of the middle of the road that are doing this. And now that I said, because of the states opening up, uh, the, the betting where you can, we you just don't you don't have to go to Nevada. You can go anywhere to bet a single game sporting event. Very important if you're going to be doing this long term, like guys like me and John have. Very important to keep that private life yeah. going well. You have to, you have to be able to balance both because it's a mental game. So if you don't have a perfect private life, it's reflected in what you're betting because your head's not into it. If you're worried about what your wife or girlfriend or something or boyfriend or you know other partner or whatever you have, you know, if you're worried about that kind of stuff of the outside things that are going on, this is a tough enough grind as it is. And you have to have your head with you. So make sure that's that that would be my number one thing I would tell people. Never mind all this bankroll and stuff. You have to make sure you have proper bankroll management, all that. You better have your private life, your life outside of gambling in order. And it'll make you a way, way better gambler. Guaranteed. That's well said. And I can speak to the truth of it. You know, I, 
you know, we, now that we're allowed to walk around the malls, I always remember uh, like on a Saturday or Sunday, and uh, you know, we're we're big football betters, right? Yes. But if I'm if it's during the day, how many times have you seen a guy you know walking with his girlfriend or his wife, and he's he's like this, you know, and and you know exactly what he's checking. I mean, he's not looking at Instagram. And uh, I think that's a warning sign, Buster. I think it really is. Like, if you have to check the score and, and be, like, glued to the TV and nothing else matters, then, uh, you know, that's, that's a, in my humble opinion, that's a warning sign. Yeah. I like well, nothing I'll... more than when I'm done Saturday morning and I have Saturday afternoon to do whatever, you know. And, of course, sometimes we watch games. But usually the SEC games occur at night. Right. Penn State games are at night. So, I mean, that – it all the balance is the key. You know, you, you got to be balanced. Yeah, it really is. And I'll tell you right now, John, I haven't seen a mall on a Sunday in forty years. So that's just me, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? So that that I started at a young age to kind of to my girlfriends or you know I, I say, listen, Sunday, there's seven that you know there's seventeen Sundays that you will not see me unless you're a football fan, and then you'll be with me and my buddies watching football. So, you know, you, you set out the ground rules right off the bat yep. and it's, and it's way better that way. So there's no surprises, right? right and there's no, this there's is no, what we do. unnecessary and, stress, you know, it's exactly, yeah. You just get rid of that right away. Right. So now I, I am looking down here. I just wanted to mention as a, since we haven't started the tournament, here's uh, one of my uh, seven draft King entries for the U S open and Buster knows personally how much uh, this tournament and all the majors mean to me. I, I seen the, do well with them, so I hope I'm not putting my whammy on myself. But my lineup is McElroy, Simpson, Terrell Hatton, Paul Casey, Abraham Answer, Harris English. Love Hatton, love Casey. Worry a bit about Simpson, even though he has won He's the US Open, U.S. Open in 2012, I believe. Yep. Of course, at 7,600, it's going to be long for him. Uh, McElroy. You never know what you get. He might he can win this thing by ten or not or, or miss the cut. So, anyways, and you know, quick, I, I quick opinion I, on that for you, John. He came up uh, seventh best in my models. Uh, that doesn't mean like seventh best, like it. No, I, I understand. Like in the simulations, he he wins the event seventh most times. Is mm -hmm. is kind of a way to look at it. And you know what? Nobody's been talking about him all week. So, no. you know, I do a lot of work with the sentiment, as you know. Uh, using hashtags in Twitter or just uh, you know doing a survey myself of multiple sites, and uh, very few people are talking about him this week, and that usually uh, attracts me to somebody. I, I definitely yeah. want to have DraftKings guys that are uh, not necessarily flying under the radar, but the the media is not hyping them and saying uh, you know that the, there's certain contenders. Like I worry about John Rahm because he owns that golf course. I mean, he plays extraordinarily well. If you know, if all the majors were there, he'd already have the uh, the Grand Slam. Right. Uh, but because of all that attention, and it's not because I don't want him to do well. It's not because uh, I well, I'm not going to put him in my line because he's too expensive. It's just that these things get too extreme on the betting community side, and the odds get a little bit too expensive. And then sometimes these guys. You know, play below what uh, their average play is, let alone play at the expectation that some of the, you know, the public betting community has him at. You know, the expectations for Raw may be too high. Um, you know, much like they, you know, the Philly fans do with, uh, you know, the Sixers and the Eagles, and and it starts with the media. You know, the media is the one that says that the Eagles are a football contender, and then the fans believe that the media is connected to the locker room and connected to the coach and they're, you know, a certainty to go to the Super Bowl. And it just, it happens everywhere. It happens in New York. It happens, it happens in every in, city. That's right. Yep. And in soccer, it happens, you know, everywhere. Yeah, that's for sure. But anyway, I'm glad you brought that up about the balance because that is, that is uh, one thing for people who are just starting out. I mean, it's a rush. It is a rush to be, you know, betting and watching a game. Uh, but just, you know, Keep an eye on those uh, those flags, which uh, might be a sign that you know, hey, maybe I probably should spend some time uh, with the girlfriend or the wife or whatever. You know, it's so yeah, well said. Because it's easy. Because no one was around, John. We talked about this before. There was no one when I was twenty two years old. 
I, I, you know, I actually, I had said this before. I know, actually, I see we're running way out of time. So real quick. Oh, okay. I, there's a guy on our sports memo, a very respected gentleman, Mr. Mark Lawrence. When I first started, I would drive into the United States because we live near a border when I was younger. And I would pick up his playbook at 18 years old, 19 years old. That was my only information I could get. Right. Yep. You couldn't even you couldn't get lines or nothing like that. Now with Wager Talk and Sports Memo, there's video 101s on everything. There's so much information, so much help. Stuff that you do every day, John, having all those guys on Tony, the two Tonys and, and Rob Vino, all that stuff. It's excellent. It's excellent information. And it's all free. Nothing, you know, so yeah, it's so, true. Learn, learn from, take a pick from everybody, take a little bit from everybody and be your own guy. But all I'm saying is that first things first, you have to have your outside doing well because you'll crash and burn in this game if, if mentally you're not there everywhere else. Yeah, that brings back good memory. I used to get the gold sheet, which is uh, <laughs> which on we, wagertalk.com. Which wagertalk, yeah, yeah. yeah, get the gold sheet and uh, play, uh, what was his newsletter, the the playbook, playbook, I guess. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mark, Mark he's still, I think yep. he still puts it out. Yep, I, he sure I know, does. I know he puts out the book because I I buy it every year. So Yep. Uh, yeah, and that book's in uh, Barnes & Noble. So a little... That's right. Yeah. A little plug for his sales. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so Well, Buster, uh, thanks for being on the show. And uh, Buster does make appearances at Manny's uh, Irish Pub, which is our 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, you know, summary show, I guess I would call it. You know, everybody comes on the show. Uh, they spent the whole day researching games, talking to beat writers, getting as much information as possible, and then they're willing to share it, you know. And uh, I'm the host, and I always come out of there a smarter uh, betting man because of it. And I uh, can't recommend it enough. Not because I host it, it's just because of the type and quality of, uh, of, the, of the people that come on. I mean, legitimately not bragging too much. They're, some of them are legends. You know, oh, yeah. and uh, I've counted up a couple of times of years of experience that are uh, in the room at the same time. And at one point uh, yesterday, we were approaching 150. Uh, wow. And that was probably being conservative. But, I mean, take advantage of it. That's what it's there for. We're all there to learn from each other. And uh, we also have a pretty good time, don't we, Buster? Yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, for sure, for sure. There, and there's free plays, right? You know, you people yep. just scour the internet for free plays. Come, come in there and watch that for 10, 15 minutes, and you'll see a whole bunch of free plays. And you might stay a little longer because I, I find myself. I go on, say, I tell John, you know what, John, I've got about a half hour. Next thing you know, an hour goes by, and I'm, I'm still there. So. Oh, it, it flies by. We were two hours and twenty minutes. Yeah, yesterday. that's that seems a little. Oh, oh yesterday, really. Oof. I know we were long on Tuesday too. So yeah, and, and uh, back I to see, back days. I mean, it just and I flies. see we're a little long here too, John. So well, that's yeah, good. I mean, yeah. but we'll have to probably start shortening these things up so people's attention spans just get onto the the points of the games and what we're doing and you know. But uh, just again, we're just trying to help. So that's uh, that's all we. It's that's exactly all, that's right. all we want to do. You know. So hey, if it's interesting, I'll watch for uh, thirty minutes, and that's a, that's what we're at right now, which is. Uh, which is fine. It's a. This has been a great thirty minutes spent. Well, thanks so for thanks. having me, John. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, for on behalf of Don, myself, and uh, being powered by SportsMemo.com and WagerTalk.com and the Predictive Playbook, may all the wins be yours.